Hello and welcome to the channel. Um, as you can see, it's a glorious day and it's getting that time of year when we're able to get out on the bike and do a little bit of touring. Um, with that in mind, I have a tour coming up in a few days, so I thought it's best to get the tents out and have a quick look, make sure everything's in a tip top shape condition. Um, they haven't seen the light of day now for a while because of the COVID situation. So if you're interested in looking at what tents I use to go on tour, Hang around, but first, roll the credits. Okay, the first tent that we're going to take a look at is my Vord tent. Um, I've had this tent, or oh, I must be coming up to about 10 years now. Um, it's a very light tent, but it's a very strong, durable tent. Um, I've slept in this through winter in gales. Absolutely fantastic tent. It's never let any water in. It's never been blown down. Really, really good, strong tent. However, it's not the biggest. It's supposed to be a two-man tent. You could get two people in here. However, if you've got all your kit with you, then you would struggle. So I only use this tent when I'm out on tour on my own okay first thing i'll do i will weigh the tent uh please bear in mind i have everything that's needed to put this tent up so i've got tent pegs um the tent pegs that come with it are very very light everything's designed to save weight on this tent however um i find that these really light pen, uh, tent pegs aren't the best because they bend and you can have difficulty in knocking them into rocky ground so i carry um a lot of extra really heavy duty tent pegs and as the name suggests heavy they are quite heavy uh, i've also got a hammer in here for knocking the tent pegs in i've also got a ground sheet in here which i put underneath the tent before i erect it um, you don't need to carry one of those but i just find it keeps the tent clean and uh, there's less chance of uh, twigs and, and debris on the ground that you miss um, getting stuck under the tent and then poking holes in the bottom of your tent and then you get water and grass. So for how heavy the uh, ground sheet is, I always carry the ground sheet as well. So bear that in mind when we weigh it, we'll get the scales out. Okay, and that is weighing in at 33.49 kilograms. So 3.49 kilograms on that one. So what I'll do now, I will uh, get everything out and we'll put the tent up and have a look at it. Okay, so let's have a look what we've got in here. It's been a while since this tent's seen the light of day, as I said. Okay, so here we have the ground sheet. As you can see, it, it, it's featherweight. It, it doesn't add much weight at all, so you might as well carry one of these. You know, and if you can't find the actual correct, um, the correct ground sheet for your tent, you can just buy uh, a, a ground sheet off uh, eBay and cut it down to whatever size you want. And then you can buy the, the rivets for uh, like they're like ring rivets that you put in so that when you put the pegs through it, it doesn't tear the ground sheet and I've done that on my other tent here which is a Kayam and I'll be showing you that in the next um, tent that I get out so here we are it the ground sheet so all that I will do is I will um, First of all, put that flat out on the ground in the orientation I want the tent facing and then I'll get pegs and I will peg that down. Here we have tent pegs. And as I was saying, I carry a lot of tent pegs. Um, they're quite durable. Um, you can get a, a lot more bigger, heavier ones than these, and I've got them in my other tent, my Kayam tent. Um, however, I would say these are a medium peg compared to the really light ones that come with the tent itself. And here is the tent, and as you can see again, it, it's very light. And we unroll it, 
And again, more temp pegs. You can see I've got OCD about temp pegs. And these are the really, really heavy duty ones that I was talking about. I also have some in my other tent. So first of all, these are the very lightweight ones that you get and they are feather, feather light uh, tent pegs, but they aren't the strongest. And those came with the tent. Now these are the big beefy rock pegs. And basically these pegs, they sell them in uh, caravan shops, you know, for um, knocking into the ground for putting caravan awnings up. I think they're called rock pegs and they are super, super tough. And once these are knocked into the ground, believe me, your tent is going nowhere. So I always use these. But if you want to cut down on weight, you know, you can just go with the super light or the mediums. I carry all three because you never know what kind of ground that you're going to be erecting your tent on. This is the tent itself. And as you can see with this tent, the inner is actually pre-attached to the outer. Uh, most modern tents are like this, um, designed like this now. And it's a real good feature because if you're putting your tent up in the rain, it means that you don't get your inner tent wet when erecting the tent. In the old days, you had to put your inner up first and if it was raining, that'd get wet. Then you'd put the outer on and the job's already wasted because your inner's got wet. So with this, it, it's all in one and it is extremely easy to erect and I will show you how to do that now. One last thing to show you is the tent pegs. Again, super, super light. I don't know what they're made of, whether they're fiberglass or some kind of resin. In fact, no, these are, these are like an alloy on this tent, actually. And as you can see, all that happens is, just like most tents, they're already attached on a bungee. And it's just a matter of clipping them together. Like so. There's one. And there's two. We don't use them, I think those are just spares. And that's all there is with this tent, there's just two poles and it makes it super, super easy and super fast to erect this tent. So let's uh, get the tent up and show you what it looks okay, like. Okay, so um, all we have to do now is start by putting the ground sheet down. So we orientate the front of the ground sheet where we want the front of the tent facing. And there we have it, simple as that, two minute job. Ground sheet down. Okay, so what we need to do now is put the two poles into the tent. So there's one that goes across ways at the front and one that runs down the, the back, the spine of the tent. So we'll get those in now. Really simple to do. We just find this netting pouch. It's like a little flap, like a little tunnel. Insert the pole. Bring it round and you can see how it makes the shape. And there we have it. That is the first one in. And then again, all we do is put the back one in. And again on the top, exactly the same as the front. Just a small flap that we insert the pole into. And there's a little hook that comes up on the tent there, he says. And there we go, simple as that. So the tent's almost up now, it's just a matter of pegging it out. We'll start from the front. And there you have it, super quick, very, very easy. Not many pegs to put in, tents up, ready to go. Um, you can readjust the ground sheet underneath so that it's kept inside so water doesn't run off the tent and then onto your ground sheet. All that's very easy, really quick to adjust. 
Okay, quick walk around the tent now that it's up. As you can see, very uh, compact, like a, a tunnel design. Um, it's high enough so that you can set up uh, and you can cook and self-administer in the front of the tent. Uh, we'll open the tent up and have a look inside. Um, all I'll say is this tent is very, very good quality. It's very durable. I have slept in gale force winds in this tent. Never let a drop of water in and it never felt as though it was going to blow away. Really, really excellent tent. Okay, so here you can see um, what it's like inside the tent. You have like a little porch area there that you can cook in as long as you've got a, a gas stove that's safe to use and that kind of space. Um, this will come all the way down or you can fold it back and just uh, have it on tabs so that it's not flapping around in the wind. As you can see, there's a nice little uh, mosquito screen there to stop all the mozzies and the horrible beasties getting into your tent. Looking inside the tent, as you can see, it is uh, a very much uh, compact tunnel affair. It is supposed to be a two-man tent. Uh, as you can see, you're very snug if there's two people in there. And I find that once I've got my kit in there, there ain't a great deal of room for anybody else. Okay, just to give you some perspective, um, that is the, my helmet in the centre of the tent. So that will give you some idea of what the height and what the width is like. Like I say, perfect for one man with his kit. I wouldn't recommend it for two people with motorbike kit because you'll end up having nowhere to store your kit at night. Okay, so the Vord Taurus Ultralight Tent. Yes, I have remembered the name. Um, highly recommended tent. As I said, it's a very old model. I don't know whether Vord still make this model, but I'm sure they will have something similar or most probably even better now in their um, lineup of tents that they produce. So what we'll do now is we will move on to the next tent. Okay. The next tent that we're going to look at is the Kayam Biker Tent. Now, obviously, as its name uh, suggests, this is designed for motorbike use. Um, it's quite heavy uh, compared to the other tent, but in real terms, it's not heavy at all. When you think of the size of the tent that you're getting in the real estate with this tent, it's, it's quite amazing. It's, uh, it's weighing in at 7 0.30 kilograms so not very heavy at all um, well usable on a tent weight wise however you can see bulk wise it is quite big this would have to be strapped to the back seat of the bike I feel um, so I've only used this but, uh, tent twice last time being at Donington for the British Superbikes a couple of years ago and it rained the whole weekend and it kept us perfectly dry um, no idea how it goes up I can't remember it so that will be a good test because if a mug like me can put it up with no problems without knowing what he's doing, anybody can. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, so we'll start by opening the bag. I can't remember what's in here. Uh, spare pop rivets, as I said, uh, with this tent, I didn't get the ground sheet they'd sold out and I couldn't get one anywhere. So I just bought a generic ground sheet, cut it to shape, and then uh, used these pop rivets to put round the edge so that I could put uh, pegs through. I'm not going to put the ground sheet up with this one. Um, there's no need today and you've already seen me do it on the other tent and it's exactly the same process. So there's the main body of the tent. Again, extra tent pegs and poles. As every time with, we've also got a Kayam accessory pack and that is basically um, some extra toggles, uh, some guy lines and some material for patching the tent if we get any rips. Which is a nice little touch. And also tent pegs again. <laughs> Okay, so let's open the tent up. Uh, 
And again, uh, the outer and the inner are already attached. And if I remember right, with this one, you have to find the center of the tent, which is here. And then it's a matter of opening up all the legs. It opens like a spider. This is like a dome tent, this tent. So they just snap into place and screw down. Okay, as you can see, that's the, the dome part of the tent up. It's just a matter of pegging it out now. On the front of the tent, there is a tunnel section, which will come out like so. Okay, so uh, we have a flap on the top. We have air vents here, and obviously they're gonna let water through, so we have to put this flap over the top. Like so. Okay, again, like on the board, we have one of these flexible poles. Um, unlike the board, uh, they aren't aluminium or alloy. These are like a fiberglass resin pole. Still very light and durable. And once again, we just thread this through. Like so. And we just bring this up to make the nice arch shape of the entrance porch. So all we need to do now, just orientate the tent how we want it, and pop in the pegs. Okay, so there you have it. Um, the Cayenne biking tent, I'll do a quick walk around now. You see, very simple to put up, even for a numpty like me. I had uh, absolutely no recollection of how to do that. I've just done it as I've sort of gone along, worked it out. Um, I'm not going to put all the pegs in, but as you can see, there's more pegs to go in the middle, more pegs to go to make it all more rigid and structurally sound. It is a huge tent. You get a lot of real estate, uh, real estate with this tent for the size and weight. It's very, very well designed for motorcycle touring for two people. Okay, so a quick walk around of the Kayam biker tent. As you can see, it's not all fully pegged out. There's a peg down here that should be brought taut and uh, this should be pulled out. I haven't put all the pegs in because uh, I'm just going to take it down again in a moment. But as you can see, it's a nice medium sized tent and when you consider how light it is and how packable down it is, I think it's really good. Um, you've got an entrance here on this side. Also, this flap here folds up so you can enter it from the front if you wish. And also, looking inside, this is actually a flap that can be removed and you can have a nice big window uh, so you can see out of your tent and get extra light into the tent. Inside, um, this area here, this is why I like to carry a ground sheet with me because I can have a ground sheet in here and keeps all my kit dry and I can store all my kit in here. If we look at the size inside the sleeping area, again, ample room for two people in there. You can see there's the helmet to give you an idea, rough reference of what the size is like. Again, there is a mosquito net that comes down in front of this and then there's a zip door as well. We've got lots of pockets put all your knickknacks in and things. Um, there is a hook at the top uh, which you can use for hanging a lantern. I'll just give you a reference. Uh, that's the size of the tunnel for storing all your kit and doing your cooking and all your administration. So as you can see, all in all, it is a great piece of kit. Uh, these poles here, Basically, you can bring this forward and they go on the end like so to hold it up. So you've got a little canopy if the thought should take you. Okay, ladies and gents, so there it is. The Kayam Biker Tent. 
which is excellent for two people, especially if you're going on a, a long tour. You know, if you, you're going a week, two weeks, you take lots of care to get lots of kit in there, have lots of room, and if the weather's bad, you're nice and cosy. If you're a one-man crew and you're going on a, a tour, uh, the Vord Taurus Ultralight, an excellent tent. It's absolutely bulletproof, really light, really compact. You can't go wrong with a tent of that calibre. Um, if you're interested in what kind of kit I take, sleeping bags and things, um, there's a video already uploaded and it's uh, what to take on tour or something like that. But if you look on the channel, uh, I go through all the different pieces of kit that I take uh, for different types of tours, different types of terrain, different times of the year, so on and so forth. And I also have another review on how I pack it all away on the bike. There's a certain way that I pack all my stuff away on the bike. So if you're interested in them, um, subscribe to the channel, take a look through all the past videos, and I'm sure you'll come across them, and I'm sure they'll be helpful for you. Um, all that's left to say is thank you everybody who has subscribed recently. We are almost at the thousand subscribe point. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, so thank you very much for keeping the faith with the channel. Uh, if you could, please, please give it the big thumbs up. It really does help the YouTuber logarithm and helps get my videos out there in YouTube land. Uh, all I've got to say is I'm about to go on tour, so I will be taking that tent with me, I think. Um, so you will be seeing this tent in the background on some of my upcoming videos of tours I'm doing around certain parts of Scotland. So that's to look forward to coming on the channel soon. All I need to say now is thank you everybody for watching. I hope it's been helpful. Everybody ride safe. Bye, Crider Reviews out.